First of all, thank you again uh, for the kind introduction, and it's a pleasure to be here. Uh, and it's a privilege to tell Verizon's story, uh, story of my team, my peers. So um, I know Verizon typically does not talk a whole lot about the network infrastructure and in public, but we, uh, there's a lot of tremendous amount of the work which is going on in the background. So what I thought we'll share with this audience is that, you know, let me try to unpack the edge in the Verizon 5G edge. There's we talked a lot about Verizon 5G Edge uh, in other forums, but as part of this community, let me see if I can unpack the, what does it take to build infrastructure and scale that infrastructure uh, to the amount what we're gonna be uh, talking about here in a second, right? Um, first of all, uh, part of the technology planning organization with Verizon, so primarily responsible for network cloud. Um, me and my team are uh, kind of take care of the edge, network cloud, infrastructure security aspects of it. So um, that, let me dive in, right? So we start with the promise of the 5G. This is talked about a lot, but it's important of why we talk about the 5G in the context of, uh, you know, how is it enabling the services and everything else. With 5G, Verizon is aspiring to go beyond the connectivity. We are, we are wanting to enable unique services and we are enabling those unique experiences for our customers and unlock the value of 5G, right? So, and for that, there's obviously three fundamental things what we've been uh, you know, building on top of it, right? I mean, there's 5G uh, promise of the eight currencies of 5G, what, what it has to offer network slicing and edge computing, right? I look at these three as the fundamental pillars, but underneath it, we've been investing and building the technology for a long time. This has not come overnight, right? So whether it's fiber, millimeter wave, and the C-band spectrum rollout, and SDN networks, and now the edge computing. With all of this, we expect that the promise of the 5G is going to be delivered and we will be able to enable the services. That's the problem statement. We're trying to enable the network as a service and build service for our customers. And obviously today I'm going to be talking a lot more about the edge computing, but each one of these are the fundamental pillars to enable those experiences. It could be industrial revolution, uh, 4.0, it could be you know V2X, any of these services are going to be coming together with all these things coming together. And now as we kind of going into the edge computing, the one thing has to become clear is, you know, we started this virtualization journey a while back. We started with obviously going towards, um, you know, unlocking the, you know, decoupling the hardware and the software. We did the virtualization and, uh, you know, we got the benefits out of it uh, from our partners, but it's not quite enough, right? I think where we were, Realizing the benefits is that, look, it's got to be portable. Not all the cloud principles have been met. I mean, we want to become portable. We want to have uh, things like in-service upgrades. We want to be able to have that N plus K architectures, not so much just about the microservices because it gets lost whenever you talk about cloud. Cloud native, everyone gravitates to, oh, it's microservices. No, we're talking about the portability and the, the telco grade cloud native functions basically to be enabled and unlock those experiences. So that's what our aspiration is. The 5G is being built on that web scale, more about the agility and more about, you know, enabling those services, what I just touched on. And for that, now let's go a little further into this one, right? So in that journey, it's very important to understand how Verizon network is, you know, distributed, it's, it's massive. Uh, some of the core concepts have to come across, right? So obviously we have the core network, which where we do the control and management functions, large data centers and everything else. We have our edge network. This is the, uh, the most strategic asset. What I personally think is that these data centers are distributed across the country and they're placed closer to the workloads, closer to the customers and everything else. This is where we're kind of deploying the compute along with our partners to enable uh, mobile edge compute or Mac capabilities. But then we've been uh, pushing that capabilities much further into our network, what we call is the far edge. Think of it as these are in thousands of locations, right? These are the towers underneath the towers where we're kind of putting cards hardware, putting the cloud native uh, functions, 
and basically unlocking the value of that uh, capabilities as well. This is the most disaggregated network you will see, at least in the US, and where we have thousands of the sites. And we think that this edge for edge network does not stop at our network. We are pushing that envelope all the way into the enterprises. And this is all connected with single fabric so that you can move that workload where you want and where you want to push in it. Think of a warehouse truck, right? From the enterprise, it moves, you should be able to consume the services and continue to uh, basically access those services. That's what, what we're trying to enable and uh, we've kind of been rolling it out right now. So in this far edge, today, obviously, I'm gonna be focusing on how the network portions of it, are, like how are we enabling the network? How are we virtualizing those networks? What are the pain points, what we have gone through? Uh, and then how, what the industry can help us to uh, do more in this area. So this gives us the baseline for that, right? So let me dive in, right? And when we looked at that infrastructure, we didn't want it to solve for one simple use case of just running RAN, RAN workload. That infrastructure needs to be able to solve for whether it's virtualized RAN, we're deploying that infrastructure in the enterprises, solving for in building 5G, because we see this uh, service moving all the way into the enterprises and, customers wanting private networks, whether it could be a smart factory, it could be a utility uh, company, it could be a mining industry, whatever it is, we want to enable our customers to be able to have the network way they want it and unlock those unique experiences. When I pair that network with this multi-access edge capabilities, you will see all kinds of other services being enabled, whether it's V2X, industrial automation, the, the it's limitless, right? I think we are giving that ultimate flexibility for our customers where they want to run the workloads and where we can even have that network be running. Um, and for this, I, and when we started this journey uh, about a year and a half ago, right? I think we needed to uh, have some tenants. I mean, these six tenants might be at a high level, but there's a lot of details behind it. These are the principles, what we said, must be true to enable network, I mean, uh, virtualization all the way at the far edge and to the enterprises. One, maximizing the compute at the edge. It is about getting every efficiency of that compute. And you will see in, in a minute here, how tight those spaces are. So when you're deploying a compute and you're trying to extract every ounce of that compute to be able to, deliver highly sensitive workloads, like a RAN workload, what does it mean? Whether it's software and hardware performance accelerated, check, we got that done, we deployed in thousands of locations. That was an uh, important thing for us. And we wanted to make sure it's a common platform where it can run multiple applications, just not RAN, what I just touched on, right? And it has to be highly distributed and security at scale. These are locations where, potentially could be unmanned locations. These are literally small sites where you're deploying it. So security was a paramount thing. And more importantly, it's highly distributed and we want to be able to operate it from a central location. And I want to be able to build these sites at hundreds of the sites a day. I mean, again, a, you're almost building a mini data center every single day. That's what you're going after. And then you have the resiliency and rapid recovery. I wanted to make sure that our principle was, look, the site should be self-contained. We should be able to continue to offer the services to our customers, even when the site goes. I mean, the, the link could go down. You have to expect the unexpected things in these kind of environments. And more importantly, it's zero touch provisioning. I know it's, it's a, it's a um, you know, grand wording, but, it, it was important for us that our field technicians, our, our operations team are able to plug these servers and able to build it as much as without, I mean, literally it comes up, understands it. We stumbled on a lot of issues and we were able to solve those issues as we kind of uh, went along. So this was very, very important for us and having that observability of the network at any given time was very important. With this backdrop, right, let me jump into each one of these sections and see where the opportunity is, what we have done, and where the community can help us as well. And the maximizing the compute, obviously we spend an enormous amount of the time selecting the right hardware and everything else. 
And just to give you an example of these locations, right? Just so that you have an appreciation. Look, you got sites where literally where you're dry, dry, riding on the highway and you might see a cell tower, just take a pause and look at it. And then you get an appreciation for one of our sites where you're deploying this compute. You're deploying a cloud literally underneath it and we have done this, right? And yes, you do have nice buildings you have, but we also have deployed this in locations where, yes, that Verizon response truck where you have, it is running an edge, it is running the cloud, it is running the same stack, what I'm going to touch on in a few seconds here. So the, the amount of the scope of the network is tremendous for us. So getting the right compute was paramount and I should be able to have heterogeneous compute CPU, GPUs, and everything else. Yes, we selected uh, some accelerators because we wanted to offload certain functionalities and then keep the efficiencies of the host CPUs for the applications. That was one of the other paramount. PTP, a lot of the folks say that, oh wow, I didn't even realize you need a PTP because you're looking at the synchronization at the nanosecond accuracy level because you're running high sensitive workloads like RAM. So it is needed for that. And we wanted shallow depth. As you're looking at these servers, at the form factors were important. And I wanted to run the servers, same servers, all the way from Arizona to Alaska. You're kind of operating in a wild temperatures and everything else. So those were all important. And most importantly, the abstraction was needed for us because whether it is using Redfish or OpenBMC, I should be able to provision these servers and turn up these servers because I could have multiple OEM servers deployed in this network. How do I get that abstraction was important for us. And we solve for all of this. Where I have, we continue to have challenges is that, look, the, the platform overhead itself cannot be more than 10% of what you're making it available for these applications. And it'll become a little more apparent as I kind of go through it. This is where that optimization, making sure that the control plane or when the sub, that cloud itself is running, you need to optimize the platform overhead and minimizing that was very, very, very important for us. And from the stack perspective, look, the, this will be not any surprise. We literally went with the open source stack inspired by CNCF. That's why, why we are here, right? And that it was important for us that this stack that satisfies multiple use cases, just not running a brand workload. I'm running today a distributed anchor packet gateway, literally at the, at the far edge of the network. That was important for us. Uh, and where we have is that the reason, by the way, I did not put service proxy, whether it could be a HTO or any of these, capabilities is because that's what we're, we're going down. This is whatever is already checked off is deployed and it's working in our network. It is taking real traffic when you're driving around in the country. Where we have opportunities in that central controller, the central controller, which is operating all the sub clouds at the cell sites. Yes, we have working software. It is scaling for it, but there's a lot of opportunity in the industry to make it open source and look at capabilities and how I'm going to control this multiple nodes. So that's one thing I'll leave the audience with to think about what else can be enabled. By the way, don't get me wrong. There is commercial products out there. What I'm challenging that ourselves is that open source ability to have a central controller trying to scale up for thousands of the sites. And I'll touch on that in a second here. Yes, and we needed to deploy this one at scale. Look, today, you know, I do at the core, I, I manage the clusters. It's a well-defined environment in those mini data centers, what I talked about. Again, it's well-defined. I problem statement is well-defined, but when I have the far edge approach, right? You need to have a centralized managed plane, plane and it has to be positioned in the right location strategically in the edge of our network, having the capabilities of managing multiple cell sites, multiple customer sites in a strategic way. So that was very, very important for us. It's not hundreds, we want to go to thousands and ten thousands. And what is, when you zoom in, what is it going to look like? And again, look at these numbers, right? Yes, I have thousands of seed and sites, which is by the way, uh, nothing but the basements are pooled for uh, offering for multiple cell sites. 
the RAN is distributed RAN, I'm, I'm kind of uh, virtualizing the baseband for a single site and I have in building, I have enterprises and everything else. What was important for us? I needed a local control plane within these in individual cell sites to manage the cluster itself. And it got to be loose coupling between the central controller and the control plane functions. Why is that? Because yes, I, that link could go down. I do want to have that continue to work, that site continues to work and provide the service for our customers. I want to have deployment capabilities of patch management, pushing the software capabilities and everything else. We've done that. And I needed a real-time operating system for high demand workloads, what we just uh, talked about. And more important, I needed automation all the way from the firmware OS and the applications and all obviously uh, accomplished through zero touch. And the most important thing is, look, the size of the sites, we saw for you know, three to 500 sites, like the central control. I want to get to a place where I'm able to manage thousands of these sites. That's again, an opportunity right now, what we're working on and we're building on top of right now. So again, if I have to leave with it, think of a massive data sites where you're managing centrally. How do I do parallel operations? How am I within one maintenance window, I'm able to upgrade and patch like thousands of the sites in one night. That is if the problem statement. And uh, again, I have, our teams have bruises, but we, made this happen and we continue to innovate in this area. And lastly, the resiliency and recovery is super paramount for us because disaggregation, while it has benefits, it comes at a price, as you can see. And I cannot have, when the site goes down, I cannot have a long recovery times to build this entire site. And I don't have the luxury of putting, you know, N plus one or N plus two nodes out there and think that we can, I can do a failover. This is not because again, it's a cell site. You got that, you know, uh, the stack and you got the hardware, it, it has to be self-contained. And when I'm doing the patching, I don't want to boil the oceans and look at the entire upgrade of this entire stack, right? I mean, I should be able to do it at a component level and it's got to be fast and quick. And for me to getting back to that service was super important for us. And this is where, again, I will look at it as, as a challenge for the entire industry is that I need to be able to recover within minutes and whether it could be like, uh, you know, active, active from the perspective or, um, uh, you know, having a separate boot image uh, within, the, within the box itself, because that's how we solved it. But there's still more opportunity for us to uh, basically innovate here, come together and solve for this kind of problem. Um, and the most important thing for me, where I would leave the entire audience is the following, right? And building the edge requires different mindset, tools and operation model. You do not have the same luxury of the mini data centers and data centers, whether you have uh, DHCP pixie boot capabilities to uh, bring up an image and then basically solve for the servers, highly secure, uh, insecure environments where you're kind of putting this infrastructure. Scale, resiliency, recovery are very, very paramount. And it, those are table stakes for us. We built this, I know what it takes to get this done, whether it's my team, my peers we came together, a lot of learnings went in there. We're building this massive uh, infrastructure to scale again with only one and only one uh, uh, objective for us. Verizon is going beyond the connectivity. We are enabling services and experiences for our customers, whether it's consumers, business enterprises and everything else. That is the only fundamental mindset what we're kind of driving this infrastructure at a scale. And again, uh, if you have bold ideas, we're a game, please reach out to us, and come build with Verizon. That's that's my call for action. So with that, Arpit, I'll pause uh, yeah. and give you back. Thank you, thank you very much. That was very insightful. If you can stop sharing, then we can be on the screen. There you go, thank you. Um, I think the, uh, there you go. Uh, there were like, I know we are over time a bit, but there were two quick clarification questions for you. One is what is EASIC? And the second one is how big is um, your edge location in terms of compute resources? So, so I'll start with the second one, right? The um, think of probably as small as uh, probably conference room, you might not see it with my background. You're looking at, uh, 
a 20 by 20 square foot uh, location in some places, and then you might put a one, you know, to U rack, I mean, to U server, I mean, literally that's what we are deploying in some cases. So that's one. EASIC is for us to be able to offload the RAN accelerator. It's just like us for programmable, uh, we started with FPGS and now we're moving to ASIC, ESIC to basically offload the RAN workloads. Got it. Yeah. Okay. No, thank you. Excellent. I think we will wrap here and, uh, Thank you very much, Anil, for, you. for giving us these insights. Thank you. Take care.